Sheriff Mark Lamb, the American Sheriff. <laughs> That's it. I'm here. Here we Thank go. Thank you for having me, man. Hey, it's my pleasure. This is such a, this is a, a bucket list item. You know, I just love your show. I love what you do and all the great Americans you bring on here. Fascinating content. Love it. Well, it's an honor to have you here. And so we're getting ready to dive in deep, talk about all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but first, we do this segment every once in a while with particular people. And uh, we got we got quite the audience on this channel that they're really interested in everyday carry pocket dumps. It's a perfect warm up for the show, just something light. And so you're in Arizona, yes, the sir. sheriff. Lots of stuff you're dealing with down there. And um, what do you carry? Let's say, what do you carry off duty when you're with your family? With your wife out in town, what are you carrying to protect yourself? So I pretty much carry the same thing no matter where I go, other than my vest. You know, I got all the gear on the vest. But when I'm out and about, I always have typically the badge. Nice. The badge on me. I have a Glock 34. You carry a 34. And I carry this no matter where I go. Nice. Trigicon Optics. It's the uh, Kalashnikov of pistols, you know. It always works. So I carry that. Uh, I've obviously got my duty rounds, hollow points. Um, I carry in my pocket, got a knife, little Damascus blade, throw that over to you. Right on, right on. Somebody made that for me. This is cool. Got my wallet, obviously. I carry a small minimal wallet front pocket. Um, then I carry Earpods. Nice. A lot of phone calls. <laughs> Chapstick. Just lips get dry in Arizona. And somebody gave me this. It's actually a little thing called Power Focus. It has a little light on the back if you can see it. Yeah, what is that? That little light just is, uh, they say it gives you power and focus. So I'm going to err on the side of caution and carry it with me. And no I, kidding. I usually feel pretty good when I have it. Um, so... A guy named Cameron Lowe, who used to be a pitcher in the major leagues, he's got a company, and he gave me that, and he said, hey, man, carry this. It'll help with your power, your focus. And so I carry that in my pocket. You actually notice the difference? I don't know, because I've been carrying it for so long. Gotcha. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, look, I, I never am lacking energy. I'm pretty focused. Um, so why uh why stop if it if it's working why break or you know don't try to fix it i'm gonna try that yeah. i got all kinds of not all kinds i got some similar stuff have you heard of a brief machine i've talked about this several times i don't know if i've heard of a brief machine yeah supposedly it shoots frequency through you and uh and uh supposedly it shoots frequency f uh through you and it will help well, supposedly it'll break up cancer cells, allergy, bacteria, viruses, all kinds. It'll like, nice. it sends a frequency that supposedly I know what you're shatters about. those yes, cells, but uh, that sounds kind of similar. But so do you always carry always. outside the waistband? Yes. Well, really? I'm carrying a Glock 34, so it's really tough to put it inside the waistband. Yeah. But um, I almost always carry outside the waistband. Never inside. Never inside. I, I Occasionally, I got a sticky holster that I can put inside. Um, but I just have always been an outside the guy holster. Interesting. And I can, I'm tall enough so I can wear a shirt and the shirt covers up, even on the planes. I fly armed. I flew armed here. Oh, you can fly. Yeah. If I you're a sheriff, armed you everywhere. can fly armed everywhere. That's right. I so did you put not in, realize so that. Feds have what's called the UFAM. So you get a UFAM number, you can fly. Well, sheriffs and local law enforcement, you can submit for NLETS, National Law Enforcement Transportation System, uh, or Telecommunication System, whatever it is. But anyway, you can put it in and they'll give you a number. So when I show up to the airport, I go through that process. Wherever else is, where everybody's coming out, I go in there. Nice. And they check me in, and then I jump on the plane. I just have a, typically a shirt covering my gun. I've had times where one day I threw my bag up and I hadn't zipped it up good and I throw it up, boom, <laughs> magazines fell on the ground <laughs> in the plane. So I'm like scrambling around trying to pick up the magazines and throw them back in the backpack <laughs> as quick as I can. 
And then um, while I'm doing that, I'm raising my hand and my weight, my shirt is going above my gun. And so I'm sure people saw me that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, well, actually, I got something for you. So I got, I got some friends over at SIG. One of them's Jason. I told Jason you're coming on and uh, he got really excited. Ooh. Yeah, he wanted me to show you this and uh, give this to you. What? Yeah. But I do you love SIGs. So if you ever if you ever decide to carry inside the pants, this would be a great option. I'll tell you what right now, Jason, SIG, I will carry inside the pants. <laughs> for this. I will. So this that, is friggin' awesome. Yeah, go ahead, hold it up. That's a uh SIG P365 Macro Legion. They put in, as you oh, can see, it's all metal frame. That feels great. It's got some weight to it. They don't make stuff all metal anymore, you know? This feels good. It does, right? Yeah, you get it feels a full sturdy. grip on it. Even with your big knee claws. Yeah. Can you get a full grip on oh, there? Oh, yeah. And uh, that's Sig redid, Sig redid their entire optics line. So that's the Sig, latest and greatest. Thank yeah. you, Jason. Thank you. This for me? That's for you. Oh, I'll be carrying this. Right on. I was just actually talking to my son. I was like, man, I got to get something a little bit smaller because I have to go so many different places and I want to hide it a little bit better. Yeah. And uh, man, timing, perfect. I love that Sig, thing, thank man. you. I do love SIGs. We almost went with SIGs. We let our, all of our, our firearms instructors, when we were going to shift guns, we let them shoot everything. SIGs, mm -hmm. um, shot Glock, um, M&P, uh, Walther, everything. Actually, the PDP wasn't out yet. Um, and they almost picked the SIG. Really? Yeah, I think it was barely by one guy we ended up back with Glock. But And I think it was probably more comfort than anything. I think a lot of those cops are, cops hate two things. They hate the way things are and they hate change. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're gonna change something on a cop, they get a little uncomfortable with it. And I think ultimately in the end, that's probably what, got us back with Glock was the fact that they uh, didn't want to change. Makes sense. Man, you got to awesome, check man. out. If you like Thank SIG, you. they just sent me this, uh, the P226, the new one. Yes, I've seen it. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I mean, I carried I carried the old school double action one back in the SEAL teams. They totally revamped it. The thing is a tack driver. It is awesome. amazing. But um but, thank you, Sig, man. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you, because I know you made it happen. So You're welcome. I appreciate you're welcome. it. This but is great. I got, I got some questions for you. I mean, we don't, we don't uh, get sheriffs in here every day, so I'm going to pick your brain on some stuff. But in Arizona, you know, we hear all about these. We hear crime is on the rise everywhere. I don't know about Arizona, but you hear all about it in San Francisco, L.A., obviously Chicago, New York, now they got what, the National Guard running around in the subways and and in the latest has been these these squatting rights with with what do we call them? Newcomers, right? Yeah. What can you go into the what is the squatting rights thing? So every state's gonna have a little bit different. Landlord tenant acts, you know, so typically landlord tenant laws favor the tenant, not as much the landlord. We saw that during COVID. You know, when COVID, you had all these rules and they weren't laws. You had these rules and orders being passed that people could not be evicted from their houses during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, which was a real screw. I mean, a, it was a screw into the landowners and the property owners because they still had their mortgages they had to pay. And now they're not collecting from renters or they weren't allowed to evict them. So that's a real problem. So those, I feel like the laws could be better to better protect landlords. But in Arizona, as far as squatters are concerned, there are no rights for the squatters. So if you, if you have a contract with somebody, then you're gonna have to go through that whole eviction process. But if you don't have a contract with somebody and they just show up in your property, like what's happening in New York and other places, mm -hmm. in our county, we're going to come and pull you out of the house and we're going to get you out. See, that's what I thought was happening. They're just showing up. There yeah. is no contract. But but kind of where I'm heading with this and is, I mean, even in, I got a lot, there's a lot of people here moving from California to Tennessee. In fact, a lot of them, a lot of these 
Okay, welcome to our world. Yeah, a lot of these neighborhoods, like these newer pop-up neighborhoods that are, some of these places are 60% California people moving away from the state. And a lot of them talk about the crime. And I, I have I have a good friend uh, who just moved here from, from California. And he said that now, even if your house is broken into, you're not going to get a response from the police department. What, I mean, what, I don't know how bad this is going to get, but when it comes to home defense and, and are you guys castle, is it castle doctrine? Pretty, pretty much, pretty much castle doctrine. So yeah, if you come into our house, a house in our county and you shoot somebody that came into your house that's unarmed, um, we're, we're going to be okay with that because you have the right to protect yourself. You know, a lot of people think that you somebody has to be armed for you to use deadly force, and that's just not the case. The requirement for deadly force is, do you believe that there is a, 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 a real danger, an imminent danger for you or somebody else for death or serious physical injury? So if somebody in your house, you could honestly articulate that you thought you were gonna be hurt or somebody else was gonna be hurt, serious physical injury, or even killed. And so whether they're armed or not, it could take, I mean, I could literally be unarmed right now. I could grab something off the, the coffee table, heavy enough to kill you, and I'm armed. And that can change from one second to the next. So we are very, very much Castle Doctrine, in our county at least, where we believe that you have the right to protect yourself and protect your loved ones in your home. With, <clears throat> with the rise in crime and with, with all the things that are happening now, what what would your advice be? Let's say, let's say, let's say it's a home invasion, and you feel like there is an imminent threat on your life. How would you advise that individual to respond? And the follow-up question is: How should they be when law enforcement arrives at the at the scene? So know what your laws are. So know what the requirement is for deadly force. That doesn't take long. You can pull it up on your, your phone right now and figure out what it is that requirement for deadly force. Understanding what needs to be my emotional and my physical state when I use deadly force. And in Arizona, it's believing that you might get hurt or that you might be killed or somebody else will. So, and second of all, make sure you're armed. Like have shotguns in your house, have pistols in your house, have something to defend yourself. There, you are your own first responder now. I'm telling you, we are first responders. The best I'm going to do at getting to your house from the time you call to the time we show up is going to be minimum probably three to five minutes. And you know a lot can go wrong and there's a lot that can happen in three to five minutes. And so when somebody's in your home, yes, call the cops, but you've got to be able to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And so have something in your home to defend yourself with and now, frankly, um, don't become a victim. I think all too often, we've society is now worried about litigation. We're worried about getting charged or whatever. I, like the old saying, it's better to be uh, it's better to be judged by twelve than than uh, buried by six, you know, or whatever the saying is. And that's truly it. Like you should be able to defend yourself and protect yourself, but you're going to have to go on the offensive if some if somebody's in your home. Um, don't be the victim. And then um, you need to call the police and you just need to make sure that when they're there, they show up, you don't have any weapons on you anymore, or at least to have it a, a certain distance away from you if you're out front of your house. Make sure you can let them see your hands, explain to them who you are, you're the homeowner, hopefully you have your ID ready so they can to verify that you're the homeowner. Um, that's going to make things go a lot smoother. I will tell you, when they show up, when we show up, we're going to treat you um, as if you were a potential suspect. We have to. We have to ensure that we clear the scene, not just for whoever else is out there, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that we're safe as we move forward in what is a clearly a deadly force situation or scene. So we're going to make sure that we know who you are, that whether you belong, where you fall into the crime, if you're the victim, if you're the suspect. And so you may get treated a little bit rough at the front end of it. Just let cops do their thing. But make sure you're not armed so that we don't end up showing up and shooting the wrong person, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would keep the arm, set it down as soon as they come, you know, show your hands. Um, but 
a lot of people get mad because we show up and we're a little gruff with people. Look, our job is to, to restore balance and order to what is a chaotic situation. And when we do that, we have to be able to, we're forceful and we're matter of fact, and we're gonna deal with it. And we'll sort out all the feelings after. What do you think that the, what do you think the biggest mistake people make with home defense is? Not having anything to defend their home. I mean, you ever watch those movies where all of a sudden you get some a situation and somebody's looking around for a knife or something? Mm-hmm. They've not prepared to defend their own home. How is it that you can, how do you not prepare to defend your own home? That's I don't a great get question. it. I don't know. I, I mean, at least have a baseball bat or something around, but I just think that any man or any any parent should absolutely think to themselves, I may have to defend my home. What will I use to defend my home with? And where are those items? What do you think that the well, what not what do you think? What is the number one deterrent? Not firearms, I'm not talking firearms, just what is the number one deterrent? for criminals to, you know, what is going to deter them from breaking and entering or or meaning you harm in your house? Here's a real, this is going to be real, uh, a cutting edge. Lock your doors. Make sure your doors are locked. Majority of criminals are, are ease of access. They attack soft targets, whether it's homes, cars, we have people that go along. We watch videos as, as car thieves go from one house to the next. If the doors are locked, they move to the next house. They find a car, unless they see something in the car that looks of value, they'll break the window. But the idea is they're looking for crimes of opportunity, easy, easy hits. And so when we see these videos, typically they'll check the doors, if they're locked, they move to the next place. Same thing with homes. If the doors are locked, have a good security system, the chances of them moving to the next home that isn't secured are high. So yes, there you can lock your doors, you can get alarm systems. My dog, my dog probably wouldn't do a daggum thing, but at least she'd bark like crazy and at least alert me. That that's, what me I was, the, that's what I was gonna ask you, is, uh, is your thoughts on dogs? I, I, I've never been a dog guy. Like I have a dog, but was, I inherited it from one of my kids. <laughs> my son had a dog. Right on. Um, Ultimately, uh, we'll get into that story, but I inherited the dog. It's a, uh, a Commodore. Do you know what a Commodore I've is? I've never heard of one. So have you ever watched the dog shows where the dogs have dreads down to the ground? Yes. So she is a Hungarian sheepdog. So by nature, she is designed to protect her flock. She protects her, her. when she lays next to me, she positions herself to see the door. Um, no between way. Between me and the door. That's she awesome. positions herself always in front of our room and and at the slightest change in anything on our property that she's not used to, she will begin to bark. What that allows me to do is that allows me to gain somewhat of an advantage over what would be a disadvantage situation. So now I can go and grab my gun or reach into my nightstand or right my I keep a I keep my Glock next to me and I have a charged AR-15 right next to leaning up against the wall next to my bed. And so that gives me that split second advantage to get get armed and start to get my wits about me to be able to defend my property. Right on. Well, Sheriff, thank you for the advice. I appreciate it. And um, let's get on with the thank show. Thank you, Sig. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And... If you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.